Hi guys, um, you're welcome back to my course. It is Financial Accounting Made Simple. My name is Sonia Olu, Olua Femi. And uh, today we'll be looking at another part of the course. So let's jump right into it. So as always, I always have uh, the course approach. And the course approach is your attitude towards uh, learning accounting. Accounting is very, very easy, regardless of uh, whatever you must have heard about accounting. The most important thing is to uh, know the rules and uh, be able to apply uh, the rules of accounting. Uh, you must have an open mind without fear. Because when you are uh, scared, it makes it difficult for you to be able to learn. So all the basic skills you require in accounting is just uh, normal arithmetical skills, just like your normal addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. In as much as you can go to the market uh, with a sum of money, and after paying for all you have ordered, you know how much exactly you are expected to collect as your balance or change, as the case may be. So you must have an open uh, mind. Another thing is for you to be as serious as possible with respect to accounting. So you must be committed and uh, quite serious if you really want to learn accounting. And they say practice make perfect. The more you practice, the more uh, you become a pro in accounting. Now for our learning objective, today we are going to be looking at uh, basically some aspects of accounting. So what we are going to be looking at today is we are going to look at how to treat uh, transactions using the principle of debit and credit. This is a part of accounting that most students used to find very, very technical. And as such, it is important that you pay attention to uh, everything I'm going to be saying. Also, we're going to be looking at how to record and analyze financial transaction. You should be able to uh, analyze financial transaction. And that is what determines uh, whether you're going to debit an entry or you're going to credit the entry. Also, we're going to look at how to prepare a ledger account using double entry principle, as well as uh, the preparation of trial balance. Very, very simple. Very, very simple. We're going to be looking at how you prepare trial balance. And as usual, I'm going to give you uh, practice questions that we're going to solve together. And lastly, an assignment that you can uh, use uh, in order to practice so that uh, you'll be able to understand everything that has been taught in this course. So for our course outline, we'll look at debit and credit. We'll also look at ledger, accounts, trial balance, then we have reviews and practice questions as well as assignments. So we're going to look at, uh, the first thing we'll look at is principles of debit and credit. What do we mean by debit and credit? Very, very important in uh, accounting. Now, why we treated, uh, why treating the accounting concepts and conventions? We looked about uh, duality concepts. The duality concept holds that in the preparation and presentation of the financial statement of an enterprise, for any transaction to be recorded in the books of account, it must be capable of being measured in uh, two accounts. That is your, uh, the account that receives and the account that gives. So for any transaction, there must be what? Two accounts that are involved. There must be two uh, parties involved for every financial transaction. One person must be giving and the other party must be receiving. Of course, if you go to the market to make a purchase, you're going to give them cash and they are likely going to give you the product that you have purchased. So while you are, you are, while you are in the process of giving, somebody else is in the process of receiving. And just the same way you are in the process of receiving the goods the person is in the process of giving out the goods. So one party must be giving and the other party must be receiving. Now, the double entry principle signifies a way of recording a transaction twice in the book of accounts. 
So for example, I want to buy a motor vehicle. That's a transaction. I want to buy a motor vehicle. I'm going to go there with cash or with a check. And as I present it, I'm giving out that cash or check to the motor uh, vehicle dealer. The motor vehicle dealer will also be giving me. So I'll be receiving uh, the motor vehicle that I've gone to uh, purchase. The principle holds that for every debit entry, there must be a corresponding credit entry and vice versa. That's the principle of double entry. The principle of double entry says that for every debit entry, there must be a corresponding credit entry. Uh, and for every uh, credit entry, there must be a corresponding debit entry. So let's proceed. So remember the double entry principle because this is very this is very very important and it is going to go a long way uh, in helping us to determine in helping us to know how to treat accounts. Now let's look at transaction analysis using the double entry principle. Now when we talk about transactions, transactions can either be external or internal. Transactions can either be external or internal. Transactions that affect a third party. When transactions affect a third party, which is external to the business, we say that is an external transaction. But when transaction affects the business itself within the organization, we say it is an internal transaction. So I'll give an example. We are paying a supplier. The supplier is external to our business. That is an external transaction. However, if we are taking cash from our office to the bank, it is an internal transaction. So if you are transferring cash from your cash account to your bank account, it is an internal transaction. It does not involve an external uh, party. So let's continue. So we can analyze transaction by applying double entry principles of debit and credit. I'm going to show you how to break down an account into debit and credit. The implication is that there must be at least two parties that must be involved in every transaction, the giver and the receiver, the giver and the receiver. The double entry principle therefore suggests or the double entry principle therefore uh, concludes that we should what? Debit the receiver. Whoever that is receiving will be debited, while whoever that is given will be credited. Whoever that is receiving is debited, whoever that is given is credited. So that is the double entry principle. So let's look at the double entry principle as it affects some classes of accounts. So the first one we are going to look at is our asset account. Now, all asset accounts will normally have a debit balance. All asset accounts will normally have a debit balance. That means that anytime there is a debit in an asset account, the asset account increases. So for example, our cash account, anytime we receive cash from a customer, our cash account will increase and therefore we what? We debit the uh, asset account. Another one is motor vehicle. Motor vehicle is an asset account. Anytime we increase or we buy or purchase a new motor vehicle, the motor vehicle account will what? Increase. And that means that we have to what? Debit the motor vehicle account. So any asset that increases would be what debited while any transaction that reduces the asset account will be credited so for example if we are paying for a transaction let's assume you pay 200,000 cash for a transaction that means that that cash is leaving your account so what do we do we credit so anytime you have a transaction you pay electricity bill uh, you pay for uh, one item or the other, you make a purchase, what happens is that the account will be credited if it is an asset account. 
So the debit will increase the value in the asset account, while a credit will reduce or uh, decrease the value in the asset account. The next account we are going to look at is the expense account. The expense account has a similar transaction with asset account. Now the expense account is uh, an account that record our expenses. For example, if you pay for electricity bill, the electricity uh, company is going to receive that payment. So what do we do? They are going to debit their account. So anytime there is increase in expense, what happens is that what? We debit the expense account. And anytime there is an in, uh, there's a decrease in expense, we we'll do what? We we'll credit the expense account. So anytime there's an increase in expense, we we'll debit the expense account. And the expense account will normally have a debit balance. And anytime our expense account reduces, we credit the expense account. So just like with our asset account, expense accounts have a similar transaction. Why the orders have a similar transaction? When I mean the orders, I'm talking about the first one we're going to look at is our liability account. Our liability account will normally have a credit balance. Will normally have a credit balance. That means any increase in our liability, any increase in the money we are owing, would normally appear on the credit side. So anytime we go and borrow more money, that means our credit side of our, of our uh, ledger account will what? Increase. Anytime we pay some of the money that is being owed, that means what? The account will what? Decrease. So a decrease in our liability or money owed would appear on the debit side, but an increase in our liability. The more we buy on credit, it's likely going to increase our, our credit side. The same applies to our uh, equity account, which is also known as our capital accounts. Anytime there's increase in capital accounts, if there's additional capital being brought into the business, it will appear on the credit side. While if we decide to take out some of the capital that we have invested, it will appear on the debit side. So a decrease in capital accounts or uh, equity accounts will be on the debit side. While an increase in the uh, capital accounts or equity accounts will appear on the credit side. The last one is the income account. Income account will normally have a credit balance just like uh, your liability and equity accounts. Anytime there is increase in income, anytime there is increase in income or there is revenue, increase in revenue will be on the credit side. Why there is a decrease in revenue will be on the what debit side. So if it's a revenue account, so our liability, equity, and revenue account or income account will normally have a credit balance while a decrease in the account will be on the recorded on the debit side. While for our asset accounts, an increase will normally be on the debit side, just the same way with our uh, expense accounts, while a decrease in assets or expense will be recorded on the credit side. You might need to uh, go over this over and over again, so you can do a replay so that you'll be able to grasp exactly uh, what I've said, but with everything I've said, you should uh, be able to understand uh, what I've just said. So now look at double entry principles as it affects uh, asset, liability, and capital. Just what I've just explained now, uh, we are going to look at it again. Now, the process of the double entry can be explained by debit the receiver and credit the giver. You debit the receiver and credit the receiver. So just like what I explained now, assets, anytime there's an increase in the asset account, what do you do? You debit. Anytime there's increase in an asset account, for example, cash account, bank account, motor vehicle account, office equipment account, computer account, anytime there is an increase in an asset account, what happens? You debit. Well, anytime there's a decrease in asset accounts, you want the credit. So if you are making payments uh, via bank or cash, if your asset is being sold or transferred to 
another complaint. If your asset reduces, what do you do? You credit. So anytime asset account reduces, you what? Credit. Don't forget, our asset account would have uh, the same implication as our expense account. An increase will appear on the debit, while a decrease will be on the credit. Now for liability, an increase in money we are owing, an increase in our liability will appear on the credit. An increase in liability will appear on the credit. That means if we are owing before and we decide to procure more loan, decide to borrow more, it will appear on the credit side. So an increase in liability account will be what's credited. Why a decrease in liability will be what's debited. That means if we pay off some of the loans we are owing, we are going to debit our liability accounts to reduce how much uh, will be left that we have to pay. The same applies to our capital accounts. Any increase in capital accounts will be recorded on the credit, while a decrease in capital accounts will be recorded on the debit side. Increase in capital accounts will be on the credit, while a decrease in capital accounts will be on the debit. And the same applies to, to our income account or our revenue account. An increase in revenue or income will appear on the credit, while a decrease in revenue or income will appear on the debit side. So let's look at uh, some of these transactions as it relates to a double entry for expense and revenue. So the first one we are going to look at is May 1st, paid wages by cash, paid wages by cash. That means our wages account will increase. Is that not so? And if our wages account increases, what do we say? We what? Debit. Don't forget, wages are expenses. Wages are expenses to the business. So anytime there's an expense to the business account, we what? We debit because uh, that is the accounting principle. Then cash account is an asset account. Is that not so? Because we are making a payment, cash account will reduce. And when cash account reduces, what do we do? We credit cash account. So that's why you see a cash account is an asset account. And anytime an asset account is reducing, what do we do? We credit. We credit. Anytime an asset account is reducing, we credit. Anytime an asset account is increasing, we do what? We debit. So is an expense account. Anytime an expense account is increasing, we what? We debit. Anytime an expense account is reducing, we what we credit. So that is the principle. Now, on May 7, paid rent by check. Now, there are two accounts that are involved here. We have our rent account. Our check will be represented by the bank. Our rent account and the check will be represented by the bank. Now, if we pay rent, rent is also an expense. Is that not so? So anytime we have increase in an expense account, what do we do? We debit. So you can see it's here, expense of rent. And what do we do? The action is to what? To debit. Now, uh, bank account is an asset account. Is that not so? Bank account is an asset account. So anytime it increases with credit, but in this particular case, we are making payments on the bank account. That means whatever is in the bank account, we will reduce. And anytime an asset account is reduced, is what happens? We credit. We credit. The next transaction we are looking at is rent received in cash for 138 naira. Rent received in cash. Now, rent received is different from rent paid. Rent paid is an expense. You are paying your landlord. In this part, we are looking at rent received. You are the landlord. You are receiving rent. In this particular case, this is an income. In this particular case, this is an income. In this particular case, this is an expense. In the, on the 13th is an income. So whenever you have an income, anytime an income account increases, what happens? You credit. Anytime an income account increases you credit. Now, the two accounts that are involved here are rent received accounts and cash accounts. 
Don't forget the rent received is an income. Cash account is an asset account. Now, what is the implication? When you receive cash, what happens? Cash is an asset. Is that not so? When you receive cash, you debit. Is that not so? Also, rent account is rent account is an account in which anytime it increases, you what credits. Is that not so? So rent accounts, that's revenue for rent to be what credited. Why uh, asset accounts will be what debited. So we can see no uh, action here on this site. So the two accounts are affected. Rent accounts is affected. That is rent receivable accounts. That's rental income accounts. You credit the rental income account and you debit cash accounts for receiving the cash. Then the last one is paid electricity by check 142 uh, Naira. Now, when you pay electricity, electricity is an expense. And we've said that anytime an expense account increases, we what debit. So you debit electricity account. What are you paying with? You are paying through check. That means your whatever that is in your bank account will reduce. Is that not so? And check is an asset account. Is that not so? Bank account is an asset account. And anytime the bank account reduces, what happens? We credit bank account. So you can see it here. You credit the bank account because bank account is uh, assets of uh, the bank. So that's how you practically treat accounting transactions. So let's look at the effect of some of these uh, transactions on the accounting equation. If you are yet to watch my video on accounting equation, you may need to go back uh, and go and watch the accounting equation. The accounting equation is just a mathematical way of uh, recording transactions in the book of accounts. It shows the mathematical representation of the assets, liabilities, and uh, capital accounts. So let's move uh, forward. So let's look at an example of some of these transactions and the effect that it will have in our ledger accounts. So the first one is uh, owner pay capital into bank accounts. Owner pays capital into bank account. Now, when the owner pays capital into bank account, the amount is received by the bank. Is that not so? So the bank account is an asset account. So what do we do? We debit the bank account. Is that not so? We debit the bank account because bank accounts will what? Increase. The owner also is paying, um, is pumping money into the business. That means the business account is increasing. The capital account will increase. And anytime the capital account of a business increase, what do we do? We credit the capital account. So that means that we will have the effect of an increase in our bank account and also increase in capital accounts. Number two, buy goods by check. Now, when you make a purchase by check, what happens? The money in your bank account will reduce. Is that not so? So it will decrease our bank accounts. It will decrease the value in our bank account. The goods that we have bought, of course, they are going to give us the inventory. Is that not so? So what we have in our stock in terms of our assets will what? Increase. So our stock value will increase. Our inventory will what? Increase. So we have a reduction in our bank value and an increase in our inventory account, which is an asset account. So our asset account will increase via inventory, which is purchases while our uh, bank account will what reduce, which is also an asset account. Both of them are asset accounts, only that one is reducing, the other one increases. Buy goods on credit. Now, when we make a purchase on credit, don't forget that credit is a liability. Is that not so? When we buy goods, what happens? They're going to give us the inventory. Is that not so? What is in our inventory account will what increase. That means our assets will increase. And when our asset increases, what happens? We we'll debit our inventory accounts. Is that also while our liability accounts will what increase? And anytime liability accounts increases, what do we do? We credit. We credit our liability account and debit our asset accounts, which is our purchases accounts and our creditors accounts. 
sold goods on credit. Now we are selling on credit. Now when we sell on credit, the person we are selling to automatically becomes our debtor. In accounting, we call that account receivable. So the implication of that is that it will reduce the value of inventory we have in our store. So that means that our store value in respect to inventory was reduced. So our assets decreases while our uh, debtors, debtors are also assets because we are going to collect the money back. So they are assets to the business because at a point in time in the future, the money will be paid back. So our debtors increases while our assets will what? Reduce. That is the stock that we have. Then sale of goods for cash or check. When you sell goods for cash or check, of course, they are going to either pay you by cash or check. That means uh, our asset account will increase. That is our cash or check account will what? increase while uh, the inventory will what? reduce, which is our asset account. The inventory will reduce while uh, our bank account or cash account will increase, as the case may be. Paid creditors. Now, when we pay creditor, if we pay a creditor, if we are paying through the bank or through cash, our cash or bank account will reduce. Our bank or cash account will reduce, while our liability to the creditor will also reduce. Our liability to the creditor will also reduce, while our cash or bank account will what? Reduce. So in this particular case, we will have a credit on our bank account, and we also have a debit on our creditor's account. That's the implication of that transaction. Then debtors pay money owing by check. If they pay us money by check, what happens when our bank accounts will increase? Because there's money, more money to our bank accounts. There's more money to our bank accounts. So our bank accounts will increase. Why? Our debtors will reduce. That means our asset accounts will reduce because we have collected part of the money that is being owned to the business. Owner takes out money from the business. Now, when owner takes out money from the business for personal use, we call that drawings. Drawings. Now, what does that does is that it reduces our assets. It reduces what is in the bank account and also reduces our capital account. It reduces what's in the asset account and also reduces what is in the a capital account because part of the capital has been drawn. The owner pays creditors from private pockets. Now, when owner pays a creditor from private pockets, now what that means is that our uh, liability would what? Reduce. Our liability will reduce because we have paid the creditor. But our capital account will increase because the owner have added additional capital. Don't forget, our business entity concept says that we must separate the owner of the business from the business. So any money that the owner of the business has added into the business or have put into the business becomes an increase in capital. So that's why you have that there. Because I know that can be a bit tricky for some of us. So let's look at the six steps that you can use in analyzing a transaction especially an accounting transaction let's look at six steps we can use in analyzing an accounting transaction and we're going to apply these six steps to some transactions that we are going to uh, look at the first one is you must first of all identify if the transaction is an accounting transaction you must first of all identify if it's an accounting transaction it is an accounting transaction if you have a transaction that involves two parties. One is giving, the other is receiving, and there must be monetary value. Then two, which account, which ledger account does the transaction affect? We're going to look at which ledger account will the transaction affect. If you look at the transactions we have been treating, we actually identify two accounts that will be affected by the transaction before we then determine which one will be debited and which one will be credited. So in every transaction, you must first of all find out which two accounts will be affected. Then three, what account type does each of the accounts involved belong to? You have to determine the account type. Is it an asset account? Is it a liability account? Is it an equity account? 
or is it a revenue account or income account or an expense account? You need to determine the account type. Then number four, is the balance on each account going to increase or decrease as a result of the transaction? So you have to consider if you look at the account type, okay, an increase in assets would what? Would debit the asset account. You have to consider the nature of the transaction. What that transaction is going to do to that account. Is it going to lead to an increase or a decrease? So if you are making purchase, if you are making payments from an asset account, what do you do? You credit because it's going to reduce the account. And number five, will the increase or decrease lead to the account being debited or credited? Of course, you know. When there is an increase in asset accounts, you what? You debit. When there is a decrease in asset accounts, you credit. If there is an increase in income accounts, you credit. And if there is a decrease in income accounts, you debit. What about if there is an increase in liability account? What do you do? Did I hear you say credit? Yes, you got it right. The answer is credit. You credit. And if there is a decrease in liability account, you debit. So the last one is, what is the amount to be entered into each account? The amount to be entered into your account will be determined by the nature of the transaction. So let's look at some examples. So like I said, you may want to replay this back so that you can understand the steps that are involved. That will help you in breaking down transactions into simpler parts so accounting transaction analysis table so now let's look at this now and try to analyze accounting transactions using this so the first one is business pays cash of four thousand for rent business pays cash of four thousand for rent so we are going to try and use uh, the six step process to process this transaction. So the first one is, is the, let us first consider the first step. Is this an accounting transaction? Yes, it is an accounting transaction because it involves two parties and there is monetary value involved. You can see that the business pays cash for rent. So that means 4,000 cash for rent the cash account and the rent account are involved and there's a monetary value of 4,000. Number two, the account involved are cash account and rent expense account. You know, I made a distinction between rent expense account and rental income account. Rent expense is the rent paid to your landlord while rental income is you are the landlord, you are the one receiving the rent. So the two accounts that are involved here now is cash account and rent expense account. Number three, the two account types are what? Asset account. Your cash account is an asset account, while the rent account is an expense account. The cash account is an asset account, and uh, rent account is an expense account. It's as simple as that. Now, what will happen? If you pay cash, what happens? your cash account will what? Decrease because you are losing value. If you had cash of, let's say, 10,000 and you paid somebody 4,000, what happens? You have 6,000 left. That means your cash account will what? Decrease. Why the rent account will what? Increase. The person receiving the rent will be richer by 4,000. So that is the implication. So a decrease on asset accounts with this cannot be overemphasized. Decrease in asset account is usually on the credit side. It should be credited. Why increase in an expense account to be what? Debited. You got that right. Decrease in asset account will be credited. Increase in expense account will be debited. Now, the amount that will be posted into each account will be what? The monetary value is 4000 so we can see that represented in the table below. You can see the cash account, the type of account is an asset account, rent account is an expense account. 
because of the nature of the transaction, cash accounts will what decrease, while rent accounts will what increase. Now, because cash account is decreasing, what do we do? We credit because money is going out. And because rent account is increasing, what do we do? We what? Debit. And so what is the amount that will be credited or debited? 4,000 Naira each will be debited or credited. So let's look at illustration two. A business is started with capital of 30,000 cash. That means that the owner of the business is introducing capital to the business of 30,000 cash. Now, this is an accounting transaction because it involves uh, two accounts, two parties. You have the capital account and the cash account, and it also involves monetary value. So let's apply the six steps uh, into uh, this particular transaction. Is this an accounting transaction? The answer is yes, this is an accounting transaction because it involves two uh, accounts and also it has monetary value attached to it. Don't forget our uh, monetary concept or money measurement concept that before any transaction can be recorded in the book of account, it must be capable of being represented in monetary value. So the two says that which accounts are involved. The two accounts that will be involved are uh, capital accounts and uh, cash accounts. Capital accounts and cash accounts, or cash accounts and capital accounts. The two uh, account types that will be involved will be what? Asset accounts, which is our cash accounts, and equity accounts, which is our capital accounts, which is another name uh, for capital. So we have cash accounts and capital accounts. Now, what will happen to our cash account? Our cash account will be receiving value. So therefore, we what? We debit. And anytime there is a debit, okay, before we get to the debit, anytime there is an increase in cash accounts, what do we do? We debit. That's the trick. And anytime there is an increase in capital account, what do we do? We credit because we normally have a credit balance. So our cash account will increase and our capital account will also increase by the transaction. Step five, which account is to be debited or credited? Now, our cash account will be what's debited because we are receiving value and because there is an increase in assets. While our uh, capital account will also increase and that means we have to what, debit it. That means we have to what, credit it rather. So we credit our uh, equity account. Anytime our equity account increases, you credit you credit anytime your equity account increases you credit so let's look at the transaction capital injected 30000 by the business owner our cash accounts and equity accounts are involved we have an increase in our asset accounts and anytime there is an increase in accounts of the assets we want debit we also have an increase in our equity accounts which is our capital account anytime our uh, equity accounts or capital accounts increases, what do we do? We credit. And so what is the amount we are supposed to debit and credit? That is 30,000 that is involved. So you may want to go through this also. Once you are able to analyze a transaction in this way to determine which two accounts are involved, which account will increase and which account will decrease, then it makes it easier for you to know who to debit and who to credit. So that's that about that. The next thing we are going to look at is our trial balance. Trial balance. Now, what is a trial balance? A trial balance is a list of balances in our ledger account. It's a list of balances in our ledger account at a particular point in time. And it shows the arithmetical accuracy of our ledger account. So now when we prepare ledger accounts, we want to be sure that what we have prepared is accurate and correct. And that means that whatever that has been registered on the debit side and also has also been registered on the credit side, which says that for every debit entry, there must be a corresponding credit entry. That means at the end of the day, the two sides must balance off each other without any problem. So the trial balance would help us in understanding uh, that for every debit entry, there must be a corresponding entry, credit entry, 
and vice versa. And at the end of the day, we should have the same balances in their different accounts. So that's what we mean by trial balance. Now, the trial balance is usually divided into two. We have the debit side and the credit side. And like I said, at the end of the period, it is important that the debit side would equal to the credit side. So that, let's look at this example of this trial balance here. You can see the trial balance, sample of the trial balance. It will carry uh, the name of the organization and the period in which they are reporting that particular, uh, that particular uh, transaction or those transactions. Now you have the particulars. You have the particulars. You can see there you have cash, account receivables, inventory, uh, prepaid expenses, properties, and equipment. You can see all those are debited. And the reason why all those are debited is because they are all assets. All these are assets. Why, on the other hand, we have account payable, accrued expenses, income tax payable. You can see payable there. Uh, long uh, term debits, all these are liabilities. All these are liabilities. They are liabilities because uh, we need to pay them. They are yet to be paid. Then we have our share capital and retained earnings. Retained earnings are profits that are not distributed, that have been kept back within the organization for the organization to grow further. And all those can be categorized as uh, capital or equity as the case may be. Then we now have sales revenue and other revenue. As the name implies, all those are revenue. Don't forget, our revenue, capital, and liability will normally have a credit balance. That's why they are appearing all on the credit side. Why the ones in red are expenses. So expenses such as our cost of sales, our, our salaries, general admin expenses, rental expenses, depreciation, expense, income expense, income tax, expense, all these are expenses. And that's why they are paying on the debit side because don't forget I said, you will normally have a debit balance. So you have here, at the end of the day, if you add up all the assets and expenses, you get uh, 422,100. The same way if you add all the liabilities, capital and income, you have 422,100, you can see that the account would normally balance that if you have done the proper debit or credit, as the case may be. So with that being said, uh, like I said, accounting, very, very easy. Just follow the step-by-step -step guide and you'll be fine. So, so let's look at a practice question. Now post the following transaction in the ledger and balance of the accounts at the end of the period. Now, what they're expecting us to do now is to post uh, these transactions into our ledger accounts. Our ledger account is the T account and also balance of the account at the end of the period. And at the end of the period, we're expected to prepare a trial balance. That's what they mean uh, by this. So what we are going to do now is to uh, post this transaction. So the first one is owner starts business with 10,000 cash. Now the two accounts that are involved here would be capital accounts and cash accounts. Capital accounts and cash accounts. Now whenever cash accounts increases, what do we do? We debit. Is that not so? So we debit cash accounts and what? Credit capital accounts because anytime capital accounts increases, we credit capital accounts. So 10,000 will be credited in our capital accounts and the uh, cash account will be what's debited by 10,000. So that's exactly what you've done here. You can see it here. We debit our cash accounts. This cash accounts, we debit it with capital of 10,000. And in our capital accounts, we credit cash 10,000. Forget all these other ones. At the, uh, I'm going to explain all this, that, all this later. Then the second one is we bought a van, 4,500 cash. Now out of this 10,000, we bought a van. That means what? Anytime that cash reduces, what do you do? You credit. So we credit, uh, we credit our cash account with 4,500 and we debit our van account. Those are the two accounts we involved, the van account and the cash account. 
So we debit the van account for receiving value and we credit capital account for giving out value. And the next one is fixtures, e.g. shelves. So bought on credit from shop fitters. Now we bought this on credit from shop fitters. Now shop fitters, they are creditors. Now this is an asset. What we bought is an asset. The people we have bought it from is a liability. So this will be recorded as a debit in our furniture accounts, in our fixtures account rather. This will be a debit in our fixture account. And this will be a credit in short fitters account because they are creditors and creditors will normally have a credit balance. Anytime there's increase in uh, creditors account, it will appear on the credit side. And don't forget, they are also giving out value. So because they are giving out value, it will also appear on the credit side. This is receiving value to appear on the debit side. So you debit uh, fixtures account and credit short fitters account. Now, paid the amount owing to shop fitters by cash. Now, you have decided to pay the amount owing, which is 1250 You pay it to shop fitters. That means shop fitters will be receiving value. So you debit shop fitters account for 1250 and credit cash account. Cash account is giving us. So you credit cash account, as the case may be. You can see all those transactions are reflected here. The first one is, you know, we pay cash. Uh, we pay capital into cash account, so you have capital here, ten thousand. If you go to cash account, you have cash of what ten thousand. Now the next transaction is we bought a motor van, so cash was used to purchase motor van. You have it on the credit side, four thousand five hundred. This is our motor van account, or this is our van account. You can see the cash, four thousand five hundred. Then we have shop fitters. We bought. Uh, goods on credit from shop fitters. You can see them giving us with goods here. Furniture, 1250 Is that also? So we bought it on credit, 1250 You understand? So in our furniture account, you can see it there from shop fitters, 1250 Then uh, the last part of it is that we pay the amount owing to shop fitters. You can see it here on the 17th. We pay shop fitters 1,250. Now, shop fitters accounts will also be debited because they will receive value 1,250. That means this account is closed. There is no balance here. We are not owing them. They are not owing us. This account is closed. Now, for other accounts, we need to balance off the account. Now, how do you balance off? You add up the total amount here and the total amount here. You can see if you add this plus this, you have uh, 5,750. If you subtract that from 10,000, that will give you 4,250. That will now be the balance. The balance is what you now take to the next month. This is the cash available balance for the next month. So this 10,000, 10,000 closing balance. Then here too, this one will be a balance carried forward. So at the end of the year, we have 10,000. So that 10,000 will be written off at the beginning of the, at the end of the year. And at the beginning of the new uh, month or the new year, it will be, uh, at the new month, it will be recorded here on the credit side. Then we have the van too. The van normally had the debit balance. That's the only transaction there. We'll carry it down to the end of the month. And the beginning of the new month, we have 4,500 for van. This account has been closed because we are owing them 1,250 and we have paid them the 1,250. So we don't have any business with this. Then lastly, uh, furniture accounts, you can see the furniture 1250 at the end of the period 1250 will be transferred to the next period, which is September 1250. Now, after you have prepared and balanced of these accounts, next thing is to determine how to prepare the trial balance. Now, anywhere, once you have done the correct debits and credits. For example, the cash accounts, you can see the closing, the opening balance is appearing on the debit side. That means in your trial balance is also going to appear on the debit side. Let me take that again. You can see your cash balance is appearing on the debit side. That's in the new month, which is September. You know, these transactions happened in August, which means that in the new month, this is going to appear in our trial balance as a debit 
for capital accounts is appearing in a trial balance in the new month. Is a, is going to appear in a trial balance in the new month at the credits. You can see it here, credit transaction. So that means in a trial balance is going to appear on the credit side. Van is appearing in the new month on the debit side. That means our van will appear on the debit side in our trial balance. Here, there is no balance. So this will not even appear at all in trial balance. The last one is fixture. Fixture in the new month, you can see it's appearing as a debit balance. That means it's going to appear as a debit balance in our trial balance. So like I explained, you can see our trial balance. You can, you can rewind it and uh, look at everything I've said, but you can see the cash, the van, and the uh, fixture are all appearing in the debit side of the trial balance, while the capital is appearing on the credit side. So at the end of the day, our total debits will be equals to our total credits. So like I said, accounting, very, very easy. Just follow the steps as the case may be. So I have an assignment for you. So you have the account of Chopsys Nigeria Limited. Uh, so you would, uh, the requirement for question one is that you are required to prepare the necessary ledger accounts uh, to all the above transactions and all the above transactions were made by check. So that's that. While for these uh, other ones, you have to enter into a book of authorized Nigeria Limited. Uh, so you are also required to prepare the ledger accounts. But in your own interest, it will be important if you can prepare both the ledger accounts and try to balance up the accounts in order to show uh, the uh, in order to show the trial balance figure also, just to show that your account is balanced. Like I always tell you, uh, you can see my financial accounting, I had F9, and you can always draw inspiration from, from my results. This, this results really, really uh, changed my life because after, after seeing this, this actually helps me to prepare better and become uh, much more uh, that I never thought I would be. So you can draw inspiration from this and never forget failure is the ability to start again uh, more intelligently. The more you fail, the more you are going to uh, start again more intelligently. Don't forget when you fail, you are not starting from scratch. You are starting from experience and it actually helps you. And mindset is the difference between ordinary and extraordinary people. Your mindset has a great way of impacting you and numbers don't lie. Like I told you from the beginning, you need to practice enough questions. You cannot compare yourself uh, with somebody that practices every day. Numbers don't lie. It only shows results. Results will normally uh, expose those that have done uh, the hard work behind the scene. And you can reach me on any of these social media platforms if you need any clarification or if you need uh, any support with respect to everything that has been done today. Uh, lastly, if you want to get more uh, content on value in relation to accounting, just follow my channel and uh, uh, we'll see how we'll be able to help you. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, my name is Sonia Oluwafemi and I'll see you on uh, the other side of the course.